In today's training video, we're going to be talking about the new 6 gigahertz spectrum, 1200 megahertz of new channels for us. This is going to be the future of Wi Fi. In today's video, we're talking about 6 gigahertz spectrum, 1200 megahertz of new channels for us. That is such a huge chunk. It's more than double what we had before. The future of Wi Fi is in 6 gigahertz. Like we've done in the other videos on the other bands, we can look and compare the difference between 2.4, bigger waves, 5 gigs, smaller, and then 6 gigs, slightly smaller than that. They're smaller waves. It means a couple of things. One, our uh, antennas, to have them tuned properly, are tuned to the frequency, which also means that the antennas receive aperture. The size of the radio wave they're tuned to get will collect more or less RF energy. So the two four waves have a big circle and they collect, you know, 4.9 inches, 12 centimeters or so worth of data. So when they are listening, those antennas hear more RSSI, a lot more, around 6 dB differential just because I have a bigger aperture. 5 gig and 6 gig are fairly close. There's a slight difference between there, not nearly as much as the difference between two four and 5 gig. So a lot of times people say something that's totally wrong, like 5 gig doesn't go as far as 2.4. That's, that's a total lie. 2.4 and 5 gig go the exact same distance. If I have a radio that transmits the same power, the energy goes the same way, all the way to the moon, all the way to Jupiter, all the way to Alpha Centauri. They both go the same distance. The difference is all about receive aperture. So if I have a 5 gigahertz receive aperture that's smaller, it receives 6 dB less energy than the 2.4. So what you should be saying is, the 5 gigahertz receives 6 dB less at a given distance than 2.4. The radio waves go the same, but there's a less distance because of the receive aperture. You can offset that by just increasing 6 dB on the transmit power of the 5 gig or taking the 2.4 down by 6 dB. We can make them equal. We just need to understand how it works. Now. We can also look and see that 6 gigahertz has 1,200 wonderful megahertz of us to play with. Well, here's the issue. Depending on the country you're in, you may or may not get all of this. And depending on the usage that you want for yours, you may or may not get the same amount and the same number. So this shows, this graphic is, by the way, this is done, sorry, I'm an Excel guy. This is done in Excel. So all the little numbers inside are just formulas. And so it's a re repeatable thing. You can go in and edit it. And so this is just showing us in this graph the difference between FCC and ETSI, the EU. There's only two that we have data now. A couple other countries have already jumped on board and coming fairly quickly. They haven't codified those yet, so I haven't added them to the chart. In between these two, there's a one that says standard power. The top one says low power. The next one down says standard power. And even on this screen, even if you have a high def screen, that's a lot of information to squeeze. It's pretty wide. So let's zoom in and look at these differently. First up, we're going to look at just the US alone. And what I've done is I've broken this big long 1200 megahertz into two chunks so they fit on the screen a little better. But they, they go together. So we, we have our Uni 5, that's the ones in blue. Uni 6 is in green. Uni 7 is in yellow. And then kind of a burnt orange or something for Uni 8. This is the entire 6 gigahertz spectrum. There is, by the way, if you look on the far left side, there's a channel that is part of Uni 4, but it's not going to be a contiguous. We might win back that Uni 4 in the 5 gigahertz range, but we won't have a contiguous, so there's one that's missing there. So if you look there, you can see the radio band, center frequency, and the 20 megahertz channels, like 59 of them. We have so much frequency available in 5 gig for low powered devices. Now, low powered devices for us sounds like it's, uh, you know, low power. How low power is low power? Well, for Wi Fi in the 6 gig range, it's actually 18 dBm. That's really decent power. There's a lot of sites we've done and we've, we don't even go up to 18 dBm in our transmit power. So, low power is really mostly think, think indoors, think what you're normally doing. You'll have 59 more channels. Now, one of the other issues that we have with the difference between 5 gig and 6 gig 
In 5 gig, we measure off of EIRP, the effective isotropic radiated power. And so as we go to a wider channel from 20 to 40, we lose 3 dB of S and R because we have a wider channel, more noise. The noise floor, we hear 3 dB more noise, so my S and R drops. In the 6 gigahertz range, through the negotiations with the FCC, instead of using EIRP, they use a term called net EIRP, which means it's going to be consistent. So if we went from a 40 to an 80, the rules allow the louder transmit power so the net ERP stays the same as we go. So the net is the 18 dBm, meaning we can actually, as we go to wider and wider channels, transmit a little louder to offset that noise differential. Meaning we can keep that 18 dB EIRP at 20, at 40, at 80, which means there's no penalty for going to wider channels. And since we have so many of them, we can follow the rule, which is use the widest channel you can until you can't, you can't is when you have co-channel interference. Well, if I have 20, you know, 12 40 megahertz channels just in the uni, sorry, my brain's here. If we ha have 12 just in the uni 5 alone, well, I can go without co-channel interference. So what used to be 40s were pretty normal in 5 gig, we can now look at 80s will give us the same range in the 6 gig range. So for the US, these are the rules. If you look at the second thing down, it says standard AP power. This is not low power, standard power. In this case, goes up to 36 dBm, pretty loud, specifically for outdoors. In order to protect the incumbents, the people who are currently using the six gigahertz range, the FCC did some negotiations and we came up with the answer saying, if you're in this range, if you're in Uni 6 or Uni 7, you can't use all of the channels the same way you used to be able to use them. So if you look down here, you say, oh, Uni 6 now, which we could have used in low power, all these little channels, 97, 101, 105, yet yeah, we can't use those at all in Uni 6, which also means the Uni 6 penalty of this channel 113, since we can't use that channel specifically, it means in Uni 7, we lose our channel 117 as well, because it would have bonded across that line. So we use we lose the 40 and the 80 and the 160. So Uni 7 is basically losing it from both sides because of the fact we can't use Uni 6 or Uni 8. Uni 5 is fine across the board. We're great there. If we're going to be using Uni 6 or 7 or 8, we need to be cognizant of that outdoor transmit power issue. We have fewer channels to play with there. That's for the FCC in the US. Let's look what's going on in the EU. That's what's going on in the FCC in the US. Let's look back at the EU. And the EU, and we'll zoom in here to just the EU function chunk here, they're only picking up the Uni 5. Uni 6, 7, and 8 is US only. Perhaps maybe after some additional negotiations, other countries, other regions in the world will get those. But for the beginning, EU is working on releasing the Uni 5 band. Hey, there's still 24 new channels. That's you know half uh, gigahertz of uh, frequency for us to play with. Even in the EU, we're going to be looking at these. EU is only low powered only for now, uh, but it still has lots and lots of capabilities. We talked about some of the issues in six gigahertz today. Six gigahertz is going to be the future of Wi-Fi. I think it's great that we're moving that direction. If you need any more information, you know where to go, wmpros.com. Tons of information there. We love sharing with the community. Thanks for being part. Thank you.